this is DMG, this is a wizard's tower, and of course you've come to the right place if you want to build this cheap, quick, easy, and of course with rudimentary household products. Get to the intro. Alrighty, so we're gonna grab us some card stock. Just happen to be using my glue stick back card stock things that came with the glue sticks. And I'm gonna grab five of those and use my amazing, wonderful scissors that everyone goes on and on about that I bought for $2. So just grab a whole bunch of those card stock. As you see, just nothing super fancy about these and begin to cut strips of these out. Now, I've laid a whole bunch of them on top of each other so it's quicker to cut all the strips all at once and all the strips should vary in size and width so that, um, you know, we're uh, creating a variety of different sizes. You can see here, there's about three or four different sizes. Then with them all on top, we're gonna to try and cut through. A little bit difficult with these magical scissors. So I'm gonna use these mofos. Check it out, this thing is kick ass. And of course, it doesn't cut. So uh, put that back and go back to the magic Cuts like butter through a knife. Scissors. Yes, I said butter through a knife. And so we've created a pile of these rectangles. And then we're going to grab this tape. Now you can use packaging tape if you want. I like to use this tape, which is called craft tape. I got it at a cheap dollar store. I'm going to use a famous brand of chip packet roll tube thing. So famous brand I will not mention for reasons of them not putting a whole pile of money in my account. But anyway, back to what we're up to. So on the sticky side of this tape, we are going to then put in a variety of different aspect ratios, ratios, turnarounds. Uh, I can't even remember what the word is. Orientations, there it is. Think orienteering, but without the compass. So you can even cut up the smaller squares into even smaller squares to fit inside and you'll get this sort of patchwork wall looking effect. Then grab more tape and you can see I've left some of them sticking over and just going to overlap it just a little bit, a few millimeters, two or three millimeters and stick that down and continue that along. Depending on the brand of chip packet tube thing that you're using, any famous brand or non-famous brand that you may decide to pick out. I'm just using Boots of Speed to get to the point here. But you basically want to um, have as many strips of tape as it is the uh, height of that tube. Okay, and once you've done that, again, more strips of tape. And we're going to stick those over the top of what we've just done. So you're starting to think like, well, why are we doing this? Well, there's a very special reason. You can see here as I'm putting pressure on the top of the tape and putting more bits of tape down um, and rub it intensely, uh, you will begin to see the little pieces of cardboard shapes showing through. And uh, so this is creating the wall texture for our wizard tower. So we're going to take the same tube brand of... Um, don't look at that. Uh, yeah, just keep that out of there. Just the same brand, just roll it up several times in different directions because this will help to accentuate the uh, creases between the different, what are now effectively, stones for the wall. And you just rub it with your fingers as you have it held over the tube. So that's going to create a wonderful little texture effect. And then cut off any offending edges using a ruler and your craft knife. So you can see the texture starting to look pretty cool there. So then we're going to use my least favorite thing and that is PVA. And someone asked me in a recent video why I didn't use a brush to paint on the PVA. Basically because brushes cost money and cardboard, little cardboard strips do not. And I don't have to clean the cardboard strip, I can just throw it away. So I use that to paint the glue onto the 
the side of the texture that is the least textured. So the least textured side gets the PVA and then roll it onto the outside of the tube in order to uh, create our wall brickwork pattern texture. Of course, you're going to have to hold it there. You can see it just popping off. This is why I don't like PVA. You have to wait for things to dry. So you're going to then use some masking tape or painter's tape or something that's not super sticky so that you can have it held in place so you don't have to stand there for like <laughs> minutes or <laughs> hours. And, you know, it's uh, just going to make your life a little bit easier. So I just strip down the connecting sides and also just wind over and get quite a good tight thing and then once it's dried it's easily peels off because it's masking tape and it's not meant to stick down now this video should end by november 2018 of course if it's past november 2018 i apologize for the video not ending then you're going to use a little bit of extra pva to stick down anything that might be sticking up and uh, this is what the tower looks like so far of course we've got a lot more work to do we are about a third of the way through this so now we're going to take the same tube and use a texture on a piece of cardboard to outline the base. And then we're going to use a CD or DVD of your choice. Uh, you do not have to be, uh, um, do not use one that you like, rather use something that you do not like. You know, the ones that kids won't stop watching, you know, incessantly. Get rid of that one. All right, so we're going to use a mini just to check that we've got the right sort of width. And we're going to replicate a second one of these so that uh, we have several to work for. So we're going to cut those out. And we want to create four of these CD circle things and uh, just cut them all out and put them aside ready to be used. And once we're finished cutting them out, grab one where we've measured the tube size there and cut to the tube circle from the outside. And we're doing a uh, 45 degree wedge. So just cut to the inner circle size and then cut out that little piece. So we're going to hold on to those. Hold on to all these pieces. Do not discard them. And then we're going to use that as a template for the next one. So just place it down. Use a craft knife. Cut out the section. Uh, but what we're going to do is use the mini to find out how big the next step should be. Because yes... These are the steps at the base of the tower. So once you've measured with the mini, you can cut that out, pull it out, and then continue to cut out the rest and continue this entire feat. Uh, I'm just, use, again, using the original one uh, as a guide to cut out that um, the bigger piece there. And of course, just continue on this whole process for all four pieces so that we're going to have an uh, the ongoing, it just gets larger, so use the, each one, the previous one, to create the next. And then use the mini to measure the step, and so on and so forth. And of course, we will then end up with a nice pile of stairs and little pieces that will be then used to create extra steps. So, once you've got them all ready, you can dry frit the... Frit dry fit them to uh, the object that you want, the stairs, um, and get some hot glue, glue them all together, and then find the extra pieces, the cutoff pieces that I told you to hold on to. Find the ones that are going to be the best in terms of size and scale, and you can begin to build up the rest of the stairs so that you've got one sort of uh, cliff side to the stairwell, uh, which is where the main door is going to be. And now I'm just putting down some hot glue on top of the fourth one. So that's the fourth CD one. And glue on the actual tower itself. Of course, I haven't finished the stairs here. Just going to glue on some of the extra stairs. And the last one here is just going to hang over the edge because uh, I was too lazy to find the right size. So, you know, you know me. Put it on, lop it off with the scissors. <laughs> All right, so there we go. There's our stairs. Of course, it's looking very cardboardy, so we're going to have to do something about that. And what we're going to do is hot glue the sides, and of course, you can see the large pile of brickwork that's still left lying in the bottom right-hand corner. So we're going to use those, and of course, I'm going to 
begin to boots of speed so that we don't have to sit through this entire process. Boots of speed, hit the hot glue, stick them down in again varying angles, degrees and orientations to build up the brickwork on the base of the stairs. So once uh, you have completed that, go in between all the bricks with a little bit of hot glue to fill in the gaps and uh, begin to do that on the stairwells as well. But yes, this cladding really adds to the effect of the built up side and you can cut off any excess with the scissors as you go along. And this really does add to the entire effect of this wizard's tower. So here we are now and begin to fill in the stair front pieces or you can use cardstock there as well if you like. I just like to fill it in with hot glue, it gives it a sort of curved, curved kind of look or effect and you can fill in the edges and begin to texture some of the bricks and the sides of the tower. Um, not all the bricks, just some of them with the hot glue gun. So that's going to add some more to the effect of sort of age and a little bit of crumbling here and there and so on and so forth. And use your hot glue liberally. Now I'm just using any sort of device or implement or something to actually um, just push in some of the gaps between the cardstock there just to accentuate the texture. So you can use the back of a brush or something to that effect. And now at the top stair, I'm going to draw on with a marker this doorway. I'm using a mini to make sure that the size is correct. I'm just creating an arched doorway. And then I'm going to cut that out slowly and deliberately with a craft knife. Now do it very slowly. Um, you don't want to um, accidentally collapse the entire thing. And of course, you don't want to stab yourself either. So do it very, very slowly and um, you know take care then we're going to get some more cardstock begin to cut out some cardstock strips some really nice thin ones about probably half a centimeter wide and cut some of those up into quarters as well and this is going to be creating the brickwork around the side of the door so hot glue grab your brickwork and begin to stick it down in whichever sort of motif you like. So um, I'm just going to use some large ones and then around the top I'm going to use some small ones and then I will accentuate the larger ones with smaller ones um, as we continue on. So this gives you the brickwork around the door. Now a quick note about Wizards Towers. Obviously this seems really really thin and you could basically only really fill it with stairwells up to nowhere. So people are going, but hang on a minute, surely a wizard tower should be bigger. Yes, but wizard's towers are bigger on the inside than they are on the outside. So even though this essentially looks like a lighthouse, a wizard's tower, in my view, should be bigger on the inside. So once uh, the people step inside, it's actually quite large round rooms um, with the stairwells going up, and it could be several levels in size. So to begin this whole process of getting in, you need the door. So um, as you've seen in previous door videos, uh, we are always going to use a lollipop sticks and uh, stick three of those or four of those together, depending on the size of the doorway you've created. And use your scissors, obviously pushing it back in the actual scissors themselves to make it easier to cut. And then measure the door to find out where the base should be and lop off the excess with your magical crafting scissors that again these are not magical um i'm not revealing the magic of course you will then have to dry fit it and check that everything is okay if you need to uh, lop off the excess so that the door begins to fit now some people say well why the hell didn't you do this right in the beginning well you don't really know what height the thing's going to be um so yeah it's difficult to get your hand into the, into a tube of this nature if you've got large hands so ah it's not really necessary but anyway hot glue around the edges of the doorway and then push the door into place and that should fit snugly and nicely then about halfway up the tower you'll then want to draw a window just rotate the tower a little bit and then draw another window further up and um, then begin to cut those out with a craft knife again be very careful be very slow and deliberate so that you don't stab it yourself and then try to sue me. Because I have warned you. I did warn you. It was warning. Okay, you just, you know, push out the window into the 
famous brand of chip tube. Then we're going to grab one of our pizza boxes, which is obviously going to be left over if you've done the previous build, or from any of the other war game builds that you may have seen on this channel, where we use pizza boxes. So we're going to cut out two of those. Uh, again, we're just using CDs to create the template, and then cut through to the center circle. And uh, then we want about a one inch wide circle. Now this doesn't have to be exact. So I've just got the scissors in there and rotate it into around that central circle all the way back to the cut that went through to the middle. So once that's done, push the one side underneath the other and begin to form it and shape it into somewhat of a funnel. Somewhat of a funnel. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be brilliant. And then once that's f the shape has been formed, hot glue the tab and stick the other one on. So there we're going to be using that as the roof. And as we saw in a previous video with the shingles, we are basically then going to cut about halfway into this funnel shape uh, all the way around and um, then begin to chop the edges and sides and corners and things to shape it however you wish. I'm just going to use Boots of Speed to jump ahead here um, and eventually we then have the first layer of the roof and we will then use the second disc to continue on. Now what I'm doing here is just bending the edges with my finger just to give it a bit of a a bit of some shape and a bit of substance and crazy looking weird uh, I don't know yeah flowery it looks flowery I don't know why but yeah that's me you've seen this channel that's what I do and of course then hot glue onto the top of the tube and stick that roof piece down so then we're going to cut into the second one and we're going to cut off about uh, one and a half centimeters, which is <coughs> inches, and um, cut all the way around, and then cut out a little bit of a tab, and then cut the smaller circle out in the middle. And we're going to then uh, create, so it's going to look a bit like Pac Man with an eye, um, and then swing that around. So we're going to create a, a similar sort of funnel shape with a smaller circle inside. And again, you're going to have to just work the um, shape by bending it yourself and then I boot to speed to create the shingles in the same way as I did with the previous level and just cut off all the excess little bits put on some hot glue and on the inside and then just stick that to the top then just grab a little bit of cardstock do another one of those a much smaller about an inch in diameter circle um, and then just don't do any sort of shingle shape and just stick that on as a little cap to the top of the roof and there we have a wizard's tower and all we need to do is paint it which I am going to leave undone here I'll just show you the finished result of the painting so this is what the wizard's tower looks from the two different sides you can see the stairwell and everything looks fantastic and of course it's quite photogenic when you place it in varying different locales so you know uh, it looks pretty cool I'm uh, quite impressed with it and uh, I'd like to hear thoughts, comments, and suggestions in the comments section below. And let's get on with it. So how's that? That is a wizard's tower fresh from the fantasy realms of wherever it is your game takes place. Now, of course, if you like this video, like button, three thumbs up, three thumbs up. To help this channel, don't forget to check out the dmg.info forward slash store. And of course, there's the latest video that YouTube recommends my latest video down there and of course you can subscribe up here and to one of my other channels and stay in the dmg universe for a lot longer rabbit hole